Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to explore how stars actually began to form. Now, the universe is filled with enormous quantities of dust and gas in the form of nebulas, both bright, shiny nebulas and dark nebulas. All throughout each galaxy, we have these huge regions of dust lanes among the billions and billions and hundreds of billions of stars sometimes found in each galaxy. And we know that even today, stars are still forming on a regular basis. We can go and look at many, many galaxies. We see tons and tons, thousands of nebulas all throughout the galactic disks of the spiral galaxies, and we see them in the regular galaxies. We see tons and tons of these nebulas, and we know that that's where stars are being born. How does that start? Well, imagine we have this huge cloud of dust and gas that has enormous quantity of matter there, but spread out over enormous distances, many, many light years. And so the density of these is very rarefied. Typically, low mass dense regions have anywhere from 0.1 to 20 particles, gas particles and dust particles per cubic centimeter. That's not very much, that's very rarefied. In order to be able to form a star, you need more denser regions that have as many as 100 to 10,000 particles per cubic centimeter. Well, how does that compare, for example, to our atmosphere? People would think our atmosphere is not very dense, but yet our atmosphere, atmosphere, and that's correctly spelled, has uh, 2.7 times 10 to 19 gas molecules per cubic centimeter. Compare that to the density necessary to begin forming a nebula that could collapse into a star. Well, that's still very rarefied, but much, much more dense than the rarefied areas of our space, of the regions in our, in our galaxy. So, what do you need to take a dust cloud of gas, uh, a cloud of gas and dust like this and turn into a star? Well, first of all, you need higher density. You need as high density as possible so that gravity can force the density to be even greater. If a cloud of dust and gas is dense enough, gravity will actually slowly force the molecules closer and closer together, and with greater and greater density, the chance of forming a star are greater and greater. But gravity is constantly fighting against another force in nature, which is pressure. Whenever you take gas and you begin to, uh, to pull it or push it closer together, then temperature goes up, and as temperature goes up, pressure goes up, as pressure goes up, it begins to push back against gravity. So it's a constant battle between gravity and pressure. For a star to form, gravity must somehow overcome the pressure pushing back against gravity. And as long as these clouds are huge in size and the density is very, very small like this, there's not a lot of chance that gravity can overcome pressure. Pressure will push back and stars will just not form. Another necessary ingredient is that in order to have lower pressure, the temperature needs to be very, very cold. And in some regions of space, where we have dark nebulas, nebulas that do not shine because they're not anywhere near very bright stars getting the, you know, receiving radiation to heat up those nebulas, temperatures can be as low as just a few degrees above absolute zero, like five or 10 degrees Kelvin. And if that's the case, in those places, pressure is so low that gravity may just overcome that pressure. There are places like that, we call them Barnard objects or bog globules, which are very dense regions of dust and gas, very dense and very dark, no light emanating from them, very cold and very dark, and those are the potential places where stars can form. Matter of fact, some of our observational evidence using the Hubble Space Telescope, we've seen those regions as being the birthplace of stars, just absolutely amazing. But it takes more than that. This is a start, but yet, if it wasn't for some other factors to increase the density and keep the temperature really low, stars would not form in very large quantities. And we know that's not the case. Today, we see that billions upon billions of stars are being formed all the time. And so something is taking place to make that happen. So we call this stage one. Stage one is the place we have a cloud of dust and gas that's ready to collapse, ready for gravity to take over, push together, and turn that into a star. How that happens? Well, let's go look at our next video to see what happens during stage two and how this process can actually get into motion.